Welcome to Fired Up. I'm Ben Solved. I'm your host, and this is my show. And this is where I'm going to talk about a subject off the top of my dome that I've been thinking about or that's been in the news. Hot topic. Um, first and foremost, my heart's prayers and thoughts go out to the victims at Club Q in Colorado Springs. Um, this ties into the conversation that I want to bring up. Um, I'm not only speaking from, I'm not speaking from a person that's from on the outside looking in. I'm actually a parent that has a child part of the LGBTQ community and I am constantly afraid for her and the things that could possibly happen. So not only is she um, mixed, she's also LGBTQ, which is considered a double whammy if you want to, in societal terms, okay? So um, I'm not holding that against her, but that's what society thinks basically or we have some people that think that way um one of the things that i wanted to bring up is um i wanted to talk about gun control and um, there's going to be a lot of subject about gun control and yes i agree we do need some types of checks and balances however i want to give you some things to think about here First off, um, Chris Tucker, the comedian, said in one of his movies a long time ago, I can't remember which movie, he said, uh, guns don't kill people, it's stupid motherfuckers with guns that kill people. So, think about that. It's not the gun that kills the person or the people, it's the stupid person with the gun. Now you say to yourself, well, how do we um, tell who's stupid and who's not and who deserves a gun and who doesn't? Well, we can start by enforcing some of the rules that we already have in place. I'll give you an example. This shooter in Colorado Springs, he already had run-ins with the law. Um, he made a bomb threat to someone. At that point, you shouldn't even be allowed to buy a firecracker. So, if um, there are certain checks and balances, and if they're not, there should be in place to where if you are suspected or it's called upon that you are uh, threatening a certain type of crime, then that should automatically stop you from getting a gun. There should be some type of review board that should be reviewing this stuff, just like they do in police shootings. So um, that's number one. Number two, um, let's think about this. A uh, couple times in the news lately, there's been mass stabbings. So we get rid of guns and then what happens? People go to knives. We get rid of the knives, then what happens? Someone's gonna make some type of poison or something that they can stick in the mail and kill people. There's always going to be something that people are going to do if you get rid of one thing. So you get rid of guns, you get, or you, you, uh, you stop people from getting guns, you'll get people to stab people. So if you stop people from getting knives, then they'll just get worse. They'll they'll get more deviant. It's just like um, people in jail. They figure out the rules of the guards, the times, and then they work their maneuvers through the system. And that's the same way we do as a society. So you stop guns, people get knives. You stop knives you'll get people mailing poisons and you stop that and then you'll have something else. There'll always be something. The next thing I wanted to everyone to think about is I want you to look up Australia and Australia's government, how they have been treating its citizens since they have banned um, automatic weapons, assault weapons. 
Now, the plus side is, is that they haven't had any mass shootings, but their government has become rather tyrannical. And if you look at how they handled the COVID situation, go back and Google some of the things that happened, uh, that the government, how the government was treating its citizens. Um, and that's one of the things that I, that goes to my next point, which is, the men who wrote the Constitution, even though they didn't write the Constitution with everyone in mind, meaning brown people, Latinos, everyone, gays, all of that. No, it was just basically for white men only. Okay, we can all agree to that. However, even white men thought about democracy and how it can be corrupted. Uh, if you look at the history of democracy throughout the world, whenever democracy failed, it failed due to corruption. And so um, those who wrote the Constitution put this basic check and balance in place to say, uh, we want everyone to make sure that the government is not uh, n not going to be tyrannical in any form or fashion or corrupt. We want to make sure of that, that, that everyone has the basic human rights. And if you don't have your basic human rights, you have the right to fight for it. And how do you fight for it? You're armed. And so the men who wrote the Constitution knew that... Um, Somewhere along the line, there was going to be uh, people that were going to be corrupted in society. Uh, whether that be the president, vice president, the senate, the cabinet, whatever. Um, and how do we stop that so we ensure that we have our basic human rights? Arm its citizens. Last but not least, um, and this is the most important thing. I am I am for gun control. Don't get me twist. Don't get it twisted, okay? I am for gun control. I'm just saying we need checks and balances for people. Um, certain people don't need to have guns. Just like uh, if you you do things when you're driving. You know, you run over somebody. You speed through a school zone. You do that enough, you're going to lose your license. You do that too many times, you lose your license for good. So if we can take away people's ability to drive, then we should have, through checks and balances, we should have checks and balances, the, the ability to take away people's um, ability to own guns. And yes, there are people who have don't have driver's license who still drive, yes. And there are people that are going to still get guns. But we can still have these checks and balances and we can still make it harder for them. Okay? Maybe that person doesn't, he tries to get a gun, he can't get ammo. You have to get ammo somewhere. You know, you may be able to get some ammo black market, but you won't be able to get everything you need. You're going to have to buy it somewhere. And I'm sure, I don't know the rules about getting ammo, but I, I do believe you have to show your ID or whatever, so um, I don't know if you have to put it in the system. I'm, I'm, I would hope you do. I don't know. But, um, yeah. So, I mean, either way, e even if that were the case, people can still, like I said, there has been mass stabbing. So, you stop people from getting guns and people just get knives. Now, last but not least, and this is a luxury that I think all Americans have failed to realize. And what we fail to realize is that we, as Americans, will never be a Ukraine. Think about that. We will never, never, not in our lifetime, have another country invade us. Why? Well, um, back in the day, prior to Pearl Harbor, 
there were a couple plans to how to attack America, all right? And one of the plans was attack the mainland. That was shot down instantly, no pun intended. And the reason why it was shot down was because one of the high-ranking Japanese officials, I'm paraphrasing, but he said something along the lines of, for every blade of grass in America, there will be a gun. He wasn't talking about the American military. He was talking about its crazy citizens, us. Now, not only, now think about this. As Americans, this is a luxury because we'll never have to deal, we'll never be a Ukraine, okay? Ukraine, what's going on in Ukraine is terrible. Um, I couldn't imagine being a country and just always having to deal with uh, a, a bully country right next to us. Can you imagine if like Mexico always bullied us or Canada always bullied us? That would be just ridiculous, okay? So, and um, think about it. Canada could never bully us or no other country could ever try to bully us. Come over here and, and try to take over because all right, so there's rules to engagement when it comes to military war, right? Like there's this Geneva Convention thing, meaning like if you see enemy troops parachuting out of the sky, you can't shoot them. You have to wait till they are on the ground to engage. Do you think Americans are going to go through? Uh, uh, um, um, do you think they're going to abide by the Geneva Convention? We almost hung our vice president no more than like six, eight months ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad. But do you honestly think Americans are gonna follow Geneva Convention? Okay, we are some of the worst people ever and we will torture and maim whoever comes over here and tries to take our shit. Um, that's one thing about us. We may not like each other internally, like black, white, um, Catholic, Baptist. We have all of these divisions, uh, Republican, Democrat. But let somebody come over here and try to take our shit and we will group together so fast. It's not even funny. OK, we will band together and fight for ours. So we, the only people that we feel like that could uh, uh, fuck with us is us. So that's the main thing about America. And that's one of the things that I wanted to, um, those are my topics that I wanted to bring up concerning this whole gun control issue. It's bigger than gun control. We need to get rid of the hate. We need to address the hate in this country. So... From all of you to Ben Solve, uh, thank you for listening and subscribe. Please like this video, dislike, tell me what you think. Comment below. Uh, I'll have some future videos of some more subjects because these people that are posting this stuff on um, on YouTube, uh, that's the main, main reason why I'm posting this right now is because we all have these, we watch these videos of people telling us the problems, but nobody tells us how to solve them. So that's why I'm here. Been solved. Out.